an Onkyo HTRC 370 receiver and it's got the classic the speakers are off right there's no indication that there's any speakers here it's got that classic DSP problem that all these amplifiers uh, experience the problem on it is the solder connections break on the DSP chip which is this one right here and once that happens the unit won't operate so we need to reflow the solder on that chip this is a BGA chip so you're not going to be doing this with a soldering arm this is done with heat and the procedure I'm going to do on this one I'm going to use a light bulb and use a halogen bulb and we're going to focus the heat on this chip here get the chip sufficiently hot enough to melt the solder that's between the chip and the board uh, the first thing we're going to do, sorry about the camera work there, I'm in my uh, equipment closet here so it's not easy to put up a tripod in here but uh, we'll try and show you what we're doing here uh, I'm going to first of all take some liquid solder flux and put it around the chip here so that it will flow underneath the chip and then I'm going to take a halogen lamp I'm going to place it over top of here and let it cook and get that chip good and hot and hopefully that will uh, reflow the solder and restore the operation of my good old sound system and um, this is a I say this is a well documented problem on these Onkyos and Onkyo has fixed a bunch of them for people under warranty even though they're beyond the warranty but uh, uh, I tried contacting them and they told me that it's not they're not covering it anymore so we're gonna try and take care of this one ourselves. Um, and see what happens. So let me get uh, set up here and we'll uh, get some heat on here and see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the board. I'm going to put some rosin around the chip itself. And we're just going to dab some on here and um, put enough in here that it will flow underneath the board. This is just liquid rosin that I'm putting on. We want it to go underneath the chip so we're going to put a fair bit on here and then we're going to apply heat to the chip. Now so I know when the chip gets up to the temperature required to melt solder I know when the chip's gotten hot enough I've just put a little bit of solder on top of the chip which will melt and turn into a little ball of molten solder once the chip gets up to temperature. So we're going to get the heat on there now I've got a an old lamp assembly here with a halogen bulb we'll just set it over top of it here and focus it down on this chip and let it run until it gets hot enough to melt the solder. This old fixture actually worked out quite nice because it's got built-in little legs so I can just stand it on top of the board there and uh, we'll let that thing cook. I've got the power disconnected to the receiver. We'll let that thing get good and hot and to say once the solder that's sitting on top of it becomes molten it should be hot enough at that point or I'll let it go for a few more minutes to make sure that the uh, solder underneath the chip is fully reflowed and uh, that hopefully will solve my problem. Whoops. So we're going to let this thing bake here and we'll see how long it takes and see whether we can fix this problem. Well the lamp's been sitting here for a good hour. Let's uh, shut it off and uh, see whether we've got enough heat on the chip here chips pretty warm it didn't get hot enough to melt my sacrificial solder but I could smell the uh, the rosin was was burning pretty good it was getting warm so let's uh, plug the unit in and we'll see whether we have lift off so hit the power button now we want to see if the speaker lights are going to come on here oh I hope it does look at that speaker lights come on let's see we got some music I think that's a pretty good answer that yes There's how you fix a BGA, a reflow BGA chip 
using nothing more than a light bulb. Now, of course, on these things, the thing that causes this problem to begin with is heat. Now, this unit, it's got a nice ventilated top cover, but, and it's in, in my closet here. I mean, I got a lot of equipment in my closet here, as you can see. There's a lot of, a lot of equipment in this closet, which is going to generate heat. But I've also got, running in my closet up here, I've also got a, a cooling fan that's running all the time. So it never actually gets that warm in here. But it still, it still was, the chip still gets hot enough that they fail. And this is a very common problem on these units. I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do on this thing is I'm going to get a little computer fan. I'm going to mount it on top of the case to blow air right down into this vicinity of the uh, unit itself. Just a little muffin fan, place it right on top of the uh, cabinet once I get the top back on it to blow air on it to uh, keep the chip from overheating. But anyway, that's the problem with these things here. Yes, you can do it if you've got uh, an air workstation. A little bit quicker that way. This took a while. This took, I guess I've left this light on here for well over an hour. But uh, anyway, I let it cook there for a while. And as you can see, as you heard, the problem's fixed.